you know, we promote our platform on, on different networks, right, on different social media platforms. Uh, one of them is Facebook, and we use that uh, for different parts of the world, different regions, and I create different campaigns. Uh, that's part of what I do uh, outside of, you know, coding and the, and the engineering work. Uh, so a couple of days back, you know, I posted an ad and then our account got locked out, right? So we got locked out, meaning uh, they disabled our account uh, and we couldn't post anything. And then I was trying to, I was wondering why, because in you know, our ads are pretty simple, innocuous, straightforward. Uh, we just talk about the platform and that particular ad was, I just did a technical video and I promoted that. And I was like wondering what could have transpired, right? And then if you go to the Facebook uh, uh, page, you know, one of those campaign pages, it has a list of rules. It's a long page, it has a lot of uh, bulleted items, uh, a pretty lengthy list of bulleted items. And you know, what you could uh, go about this in two ways, right? One is you, when you create an ad or a campaign, uh, or a campaign and an ad within that campaign, you can go look up all the rules, make sure that you don't violate any one of them. That's possible and you could choose to do that. Or the other way around is um, just say the right things and do the right things. You know, if you feel like you're doing the right things, uh, the odds that it's gonna violate something is, is almost negligible, right? So when we create campaigns and advertisements, um, we, I talk about technical stuff, sometimes non-technical stuff, uh, but it's, uh, there's nothing in, in, in those videos that you could possibly even take offense to, even if you wanted to do it, right? Even if you went out of the way and tried to identify issues, I could almost challenge you that you probably can do it because we don't, you know, we don't think in that fashion. So that's how I go about it. I don't have the time, honestly, to read every single bullet, but if you do the right thing, what your heart says is right. Um, what are the odds that you're actually gonna violate anything anywhere in life? That's how I've lived all of my life so far, and I don't see a reason why I would change it going forward. Um, so I was like, okay, what? why would they reject it? Then I tried to look through each of those bullets. I actually spent time two days ago, later on at night, just trying to read through that. And sure enough, I didn't like, see anything that we had done that would have violated any one of those items. So then I went through, went to their page uh, and tried to request a review. But here's where I'm actually coming to the crux of this, <laughs> this video, that even large companies, uh, almost trillion dollar companies, right, can have not just bugs, lots of bugs, but also fundamental issues with certain aspects of their products and platforms. So I go there and I followed the links in the email. It asked me, to, uh, it said, you know, that they suspected some suspicious activity or something of that nature. So I, I had to uh, submit proof of my identification. Yeah, sure, I did that. Um, they asked for a couple of options. I did provide proof and then I click submit. And I know when you do that, it generally takes a while, but it had no relevance or I didn't see what the connection between that and my ad accounts being blocked were. But maybe there was, maybe there could have been a connection, right? So I did that upload. And then I still could not request a review because it said that they would have to approve that step before I could request a review of the ad that was rejected and the account that was locked. That didn't sound right to me. So I kept looking more. And then I found some more links where you could actually get to chatting with Facebook support like a, as a business customer. Um, completely not something that was in their email right? or their links. You have to go someplace else, go through Facebook uh, business or campaign, whatever one of those uh, tools are. And then uh, you have to answer quite a few questions if memory serves me right. Because you can't get to talk to a representative, right? That's, it's generally hidden and intentionally so because they want you to not bug anyone and then uh, just hopefully get your answers resolved. But it's, it hardly ever happens, I've seen at least by personal experience. So I found that and I was starting to chat with the representative and sure enough, one more time, they told me the exact same thing that I already knew or what the email alluded to essentially, right? Hey, make sure you don't violate these items, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and I'm like, no, I did not. And if I did, can you please tell me what it is? And they're like, hey, we're not the team that does it. We're gonna have to forward the request to some other team. Okay, so there's not, a whole lot of value add there particularly. Uh, so after a pretty lengthy chat, uh, they at least put that through in the pipelines to request a review. They said it had to be a completely different team. And then I got another email that said it could take between one to two weeks, right? And be patient. Uh, but then when I checked that out on the Facebook campaign manager or the ad manager, or whatever that platform is called, it said it could take several weeks or did it say months or several weeks because of uh, different, because of the situation we're all in. It could take several weeks. So there was also inc inconsistency between 
documentation there and what they had said in the email. Um, so I was like, I kept my fingers crossed. I knew it would be approved eventually. I just didn't know when or how or what they might ask if they had questions. Uh, and in the meantime, I was trying to debug, right? Just trying to draw a parallel between, uh, uh, trying to contrast between this ad, uh, which caused this whole, uh, caused the account to be uh, disabled. I had a feeling it had, it had to have, had to had, it should have had something to do with that particular ad because it happened quite immediately after I published that ad. And then I'm looking at the, the video, it's like 60 seconds and talking about an Apple, uh, Apple bug I, I ran into. Uh, it's none of the video, you feel free to check that out. Um, so there's absolutely nothing controversial in that, right? The only thing I could think of was the fonts I had used. Again, they were, I think the name of the font is a fantastic font. It's, it's one of the uh, nicer looking stylish fonts but it's not particularly easy to read. Maybe not easy enough for a machine to read it. So maybe it identified those characters as something it probably did not recognize. That's at least my hunch, because they did not tell you why an ad may have gotten rejected. They just tell you it got rejected. It could be one of any number of reasons and your guess is as good as mine or theirs, um, because they don't disclose that to you. Or not even disclose, they don't, they don't even give you an indication as to what your problem might be so you could actually fix it. It's just a boolean, right? Right or wrong, true or false, good or bad, um, yes or no, um, logged or unlogged, approved or disapproved, right? or rejected. So that's as simple as that. So uh, I waited and I sent them a couple of more emails. It, you know, if you go to, if you dig deeper, there are large companies, so there's a number of different ways you can actually reach out to them and you don't know which might work faster than the other. Um, so you have to do your due diligence. And I think I reached out to one of, three or four means if I remember correctly. Um, and then today on my birthday, thank you, a happy birthday to me. Uh, may the force be with you. Um, so I got the email and I was happy because they approved it, they unlocked it, they said, hey, apologies, it was incorrectly locked, so we're gonna unlock it. But now, you know, only way I can confirm if my font theory is even remotely accurate is I have to create another, cam another ad, uh, which is very similar, but using the same font. And if it does re get rejected one more time, then at least I know that that's got to be the case, right? Um, I don't know if I want to do that, but I'm still curious. So I might do it because I do like a few fonts that show better on these ads when you or thumbnails. I don't lose a font because I might incorrectly think that it was rejected because of that font, which may or may not have been the case. Um, but we'll see. Anyways, I just want to share this experience. So. Uh, if you're creating campaigns, keep an eye on that, right? Obviously, on top of not, uh, on top of, you know, I'm going to state the obvious, but you can check list, uh, see the list of their rules. I mean, don't say anything that's controversial. Don't, I think they say, don't say anything political. Uh, you know, anything that you feel like might be wrong, just don't do it. I think that's the best way to go about in life. Before you do something, ask yourself if you feel comfortable doing it. Uh, if for whatever reason you feel uncomfortable, there's a good chance that you probably don't want to do it, right? Maybe there's something wrong. Uh, that's the only way I keep my checks and balances and sanity. Uh, if my heart says, don't do it, uh, I refrain from doing it. Um, that's not to say that when it says do it and you do it and it ends up being picture perfect and great, but that you can't help, right? You want to learn, live and learn and rectify your mistakes. But when you feel like it's not, doesn't feel or smell right, just don't do it because 99.99% of the time, it probably would not be right, right? Um, so keep an eye on it. But there's other rules too when it comes to campaigns, you know, how much text you can have on these ads, uh, uh, whether it's too texty or too verbose. Uh, they allow a certain number of texts. There's a percentage, I think it's like 20% or some number like that. So I've tried, you know, a number of different ads. Some had been rejected in the past, but like when we started the campaign out, when we went live almost a year ago now, uh, but since then I've posted a number of ads on a number of network, on a number of social media platforms. And I would say our, our success rate, at least in the ads being approved and not being rejected, has been well over 90%, right? Um, so I think we've learned from our earlier mistakes because each of them have slightly, uh, I mean, there are common aspects of their roles. There are overlaps and if you grew a Venn diagram, you'd see that, uh, but there are items that are unique as well. The same ad that gets approved by Facebook may get rejected by Pinterest, for instance, right? And actually it did happen. Uh, it has happened to me. Uh, just because their rules are different, you know, uh, and there's plenty of things that come into play. Anyways, hopefully some of that made sense. Maybe some of it was entertaining, but uh, talk to you soon.